if I'm allowed to swear on YouTube. I'm probably gonna have to crop that out. Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another video. For those of you that are new here, my name is Karen, and thank you so, so, so much for checking out my channel. Guys, it would mean the world to me if you can hit that little red button that says subscribe. I'm going to be putting out a new video every week. I'm trying really hard to bring you guys valuable and informative content. So please hit the subscribe button, like this video. Also, follow me on Instagram. My handle will be somewhere down here on the screen. So with that being said, let's dive straight into today's video. Okay. So lately I've been sharing a lot of images on Instagram opening up a lot about things that people generally don't want to show the social media world. I shared recently some pictures of my skin before and after my acne and my scarring and I got so many messages and comments from you girls asking me to make a video about it. So that is what we are here doing today. I have fought with acne my entire life under this face of makeup. I have a ton of hyperpigmentation. Do I still have active acne? No, I've managed to get rid of it, which is what I want to help you guys out with today. I've made massive improvements with my texture, with my scarring, and this is all the information that I want to share with you guys on how I got from this point to this point over here. I know that acne can really change the way that you live your life, the way that you see yourself. It has caused me so many tears, so much psychological damage, and I'll probably forever look in the mirror and see what I will probably always feel looks like a monstrosity of a face. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'd rather open up about it and I'd rather help anyone else who might be in a similar situation try to make their acne better or try to make their scarring better. When I'm giving you this advice and when I'm giving you tips on how to cure your acne or how to help with your scarring, please take everything that I say with a grain of salt. And by that, I mean all of this stuff genuinely worked amazing for me. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work for everyone. We are all different. So I strongly urge you guys to please take what I'm saying and do your own research before you start putting this stuff in your bodies or before you start putting it on your face. As much as I appreciate the blind trust that some of you on Instagram seem to have in me, you should always, always, always do your own research. So with that being said, let's get started. Before we get any further, I want to give you guys a bit of a background on my skin so you can understand what I've been through. So I never really had that bad of acne back in high school. I would get some pimples on my face. I wouldn't say more than the average teenager, but after high school, at some point in Seja, you know those friggin' infomercials we used to see with Jessica Simpson back when she was like the it girl and I would see them at night and be like, hmm, yeah, yeah. This girl needs proactive and she's gonna have clear skin. Well, I assure you, proactive did not give me clear skin. Proactive is actually what completely destroyed my skin. As soon as I stopped because I couldn't afford to renew my subscription, my skin was like, imagine a volcano and phew, eruption. I'm not trying to suggest that proactive was necessarily the cause of my acne, but I think proactive brought out what was bound to come out and made it come out at more of like a full force because from that day forward i had horrendous cystic acne from the top of my face down to even my neck so the pictures that i shared with you earlier that was like my acne was bad but it wasn't at its worst i actually have no pictures from back when it was at its worst because i didn't dare have any sort of evidence that my face ever looked like that but they were hard lumps that were under the skin, especially on my jaw area, on my cheeks. That's where most of my scarring is now. And it was just, it was so embarrassing. Your face is the first thing that people see. No matter how much amount of makeup I wore or tried to cover it, the texture was there, the lumps was there. I didn't feel normal. Like I was that girl when I would stay at my husband, well, my then boyfriend who's now my husband, when I would stay over, I would hide makeup in the bathroom so that I could wake up really early 
and cover up my acne before he could see me. Like, I have no shame. That was me. It's the honest truth of what some of us need to go through. Obviously, Accutane was something that I considered multiple times from the moment this started till the very end. But Accutane is a very, very potent drug and it comes with a lot of side effects. I was really determined to keep it as a last resort measure and try to find other means to take care of my acne. If you were to ask me the one question, what is the one thing that cleared up your acne? It would be this. This is my baby. This is evening primrose oil. And I don't go anywhere without it. And I never, ever, ever will again. With acne, obviously there's things that you could do topically that can help your existing breakouts. But if you have cystic and hormonal acne, it's coming from the inside. The acne is being caused by something inside your body. So no matter how many creams, serums, or whatever you put on your face, you're not gonna stop the new breakouts from coming. So I did a lot, a lot of research and eventually I came across a few forums that was talking about something called EPO, Evening Primrose Oil. So what Evening Primrose Oil basically is, is an omega-6. And I know that omega-6s generally get a bad rap, because if you offset your omega-6 versus omega-3 balance in the body, it actually produces inflammatory effects in the body. But there's different kinds of omega-6s. So the kinds of bad omega-6s, so to speak, are generally from like vegetable oils. So canola oil, for example, is a common one and people generally, especially in North America, over consume them. So those are the bad kinds of omega-6s that you kind of want to avoid. Evening primrose oil, on the other hand, is kind of the exception to the rule because it's rich in what we call GLAs, so gamma linoleic acids. And gamma linoleic acids actually have anti-inflammatory properties, obviously making it very good for acne sufferers. But even more important, these GLAs help naturally balance the hormone levels in the body. Obviously, once I read this, I researched thoroughly as much as I could and I decided this was something that I wanted to try but I had no idea whatsoever how much I was supposed to take some people were taking a thousand milligrams a day there were other people taking up to like 5,000 milligrams a day so I kind of played around with it and I found that when I was taking a thousand milligrams a day it wasn't enough I went up to 3,000 milligrams a day and it was too much like I was having bad side effects like Sorry for the details, but like I was getting constipated and I was so bloated to the point that it hurt, like I looked pregnant. So for me, I found that the happy balance was 2000 milligrams a day. And anyone else that I've recommended this to, I always suggest that you listen to your own body if this is something you're going to try, see how well it's working for you, see how your body's responding. Maybe 2000 milligrams works for me, maybe you need more, maybe you need less. Listen to your body and do what you feel is right. This is not something that you're going to take and instantly start seeing results. Anything that you take that's internal needs time to work. So this is something that you need to give like a good six to eight weeks to start showing results. And I'm not going to lie, there is a very good possibility that your acne might get worse before it gets better. So you might have to go through that so-called purging process. I did, I know when I started taking it, I would say the first month was really, really bad, but I had previously read in acne forums that other people went through this so I knew it was normal and at that point I had nothing to lose so I suffered through it and then by the six to eight week mark everything was starting to progressively get better and better and better until I wasn't having acne anymore there are other benefits to taking evening primrose oil so I know this has nothing to do with acne but I feel like I should mention it while we're on the topic for anyone who has really bad PMS, sis, sis, why can't I say symptoms? I can't say that word, symptoms. Especially, you know, the pain that you get that time of the month. I had it so bad that I would often call in sick to work. I would be on my bed in the fetal position screaming in pain. Ever since I've been taking evening primrose, the pain has been regulated as well. So it's been a complete godsend for me. There are all different kinds of brands that make evening primrose oil and frankly, I'm not 
versed enough to tell you guys which one is better than others. I could just tell you guys which ones have worked for me. So my favorite to date is the one that I showed you earlier. It's by a brand called Ephemal. I'll put the name of it on the screen. So this bottle is 90 soft gels. They're 1,000 milligrams per soft gel. It also comes in 500 milligrams per soft gel, but given that we're taking 2,000 milligrams a day, I figured that this was easier because I could just take two. So I take one in the morning and I'll take one generally before dinner to split the dose throughout the day. So anyways, this bottle here sells for about $30 Canadian. If you're from Montreal, you can find this at Tao. That's always where I buy it. So other benefits of taking evening primrose oil, like it's really, really, really good for your hair and nails too. My hair and nails grow so fast now, it's mind blowing. Are there other things that I've tried that have helped my acne from an internal perspective? Yes, but nothing that has gotten rid of my acne the way that evening primrose oil has. From a topical perspective, there's a lot of things you could do to help the existing breakouts, but like I said, it won't prevent them from happening. Sorry, my dog wants to be fed. Hey guys, so this is Bella. She likes to remind me that I'm a bad mommy who forgot to feed her. So from a more affordable DIY sort of standpoint, there are two products that I'd recommend. So the first one that I use all the time is Baby Rash Cream. So the one that I like is a Desiden. You don't have to use this one. There's other brands. Just make sure that it has zinc oxide in it because that's the active ingredient that is going to help your acne. So what it is, is basically an anti-inflammatory agent and it will also dry up your pimple really, really quickly. I personally use this as a spot treatment, so I'll take a Q-tip and I'll dab it right onto the pimple and I'll leave it on overnight. I know I've seen some people do entire face masks with this and personally I wouldn't recommend this because this can actually cause your pores to become congested. So I personally would recommend against that but this definitely does work really, really, really well. The next product that I would recommend to you guys for spot treatments is Nizarol. So Nizarol, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's like this pink jelly type shampoo treatment that's intended to treat scalp dermatitis conditions. The active ingredient in this, and I'm gonna read it off the bottle because I'm definitely not pronouncing this right, is ketoconazole. For sure not pronouncing that right, I'll put it down at the bottom of the screen here. So yeah, this ingredient here helps clear up uh, yeast-based acne. So I had on my forehead, like, it wasn't big spots, it was more like small little skin colored bumps covering the entire forehead. And I'll put a picture up on the screen over here to show you guys an example. This is amazing for treating that. It won't treat the cystic acne, but it will treat those yeast-based infections. Another thing that worked for me, and this might sound really weird, but was switching my toothpaste. So I used to get a lot of bumps around my mouth over here, specifically like this chin mouth region. And even once my acne cleared from the evening primrose, no matter what I did, it was just still there. So I scoured through Google and all kinds of forums and I read that some people are more sensitive to fluoride than others. So when you brush your teeth, obviously you're spitting out the toothpaste, but you inevitably end up ingesting some of it. So once I switch to a natural toothpaste, I'm telling you those breakouts around this part of my mouth completely stop. The next product that I'm about to show you guys, I just want to put out as a little disclaimer. If you try it, you try it at your own risk because this is a very potent chemical peel. Always do your research and determine if this is something you wanna try. I often play guinea pig with my skin and I am so happy that I found this product. So this is a peel, a chemical peel here by the brand Skin Laboratory. They make a few peels. This is their HQ Plus peel and I'm going to talk about this peel again in my scarring video. But basically what it is, is a combination peel. The active ingredient in it that is really helping with the acne specifically is the salicylic acid. 
So that's a BHA and BHAs basically have antibacterial properties making them very very good for treating acne and they also work by going under the skin and removing the excess sebum. So this stuff, if I'm using it specifically for acne, I'm not using it all over my face. I use it all over my face more every like two months for scarring, but this I'll use as a spot treatment when I get really, really bad breakouts. Take like a Q-tip and I'll dip it in and put it specifically on the pimple. And I swear to God, the pimple like dries up before your eyes and turns like into like a white head. It's absolutely insane. It is my secret weapon when it comes to treating breakouts. Last product that I'm going to mention to you guys is actually fairly new for me, but it's made such a difference in my skin in just a few weeks. I feel like it's definitely worth mentioning. So this here is a BHA liquid by a brand called Cost RX. I just explained to you the benefits of BHA for the skin, but this is something here that it's a lot more gentle and can actually be used every day. So the way that you basically use this product here is by putting it on a cotton pad and kind of applying it the same way that you would a toner. It has done so much good for clearing out blackheads and small little skin color type congestion and also pimples. So I actually discovered this when this BHA liquid here by Paula's Choice broke the crap out of my skin. Like I was exploding everywhere. And that's when I bought this one here to clear up what this one here did. So if you are ever debating between these two products here, I mean, I know the Paula's Choice has a lot of good reviews by some people. This one here definitely did not work for me. Its active ingredient is salicylic acid. And I guess the formulation in here is just been, it doesn't work with my skin. My skin completely breaks out. It also completely destroyed the moisture barrier of my skin. My forehead was shiny and tight. It was so dry. It was absolutely disgusting. So this one here, I mean, it contains salicylic acid, but it's a different form of it because it's actually a Korean product. And in Korea, they have a lot more strict laws on the use of salicylic acid in skincare products. So it contains a different form of it called, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, but beta salicylate, I think it's called. But anyways, this here is a lot more gentle on the skin. It completely got rid of all the breakouts that I had on my forehead within the span of a few days. And it's a lot more hydrating, a lot more gentle. So as a day-to-day -day sort of acne prevention or blemish treatment, this has worked super, super, super well for me and will become a permanent part of my routine. That is pretty much it for today. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other things that I've tried that have helped, but I really wanted to narrow down this video to the things that I can genuinely say made a world of difference for me. So with that being said, I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was a little lengthy, but I wanted to keep it as informative as possible because I know that I appreciate that when I'm watching other people's videos. And with that being said, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, the button's right underneath. Remember to hit that red subscribe button. And of course, follow me on Instagram at The Real Co. I share a lot of great content there as well. With that being said, thank you and I'll see you in the next one.